In this video we're looking at the binomial distribution and we're going to apply the binomial distribution to some lottery tickets. Now notice in this video when they're picking the balls out of this machine there are three separate bins each with balls numbered 0 through 9. And so what they do is they pick one ball from each of the three separate bins. So the first one they picked a 6, the second one a 5, and then the third one they picked a 0. Now this is a pick 4. It's the same kind of structure except they have four bins. Again, each with numbers 0 through 9. And they pick one ball from each bin. So the point is that each of these bins, since they're separate, they are identical and independent. And what that allows to happen here is, you see the first number they pick is an 8, and also the last number that they pick is also an 8. And that differs very much from this kind of lottery, where they have one large bucket, and in this case, this bucket is filled with 41 balls, and here they're picking five balls out of one big bucket. That kind of process is dependent. It's not independent as when you have three or four separate buckets to draw these balls from. So when you're picking from one big bucket, you have to use a different formula called the hypergeometric. Here, with the pick three or pick four, which we'll be focusing on in this video, we use the binomial distribution, which gives the probability of getting X successes in N identical independent trials. So each time we draw a ball from one of those three or four buckets, that's an independent trial that's identical to the previous draw. And what we mean by success is, are they pulling out the ball that we want? So let's look at the binomial formula and see how that would work in this case. Okay, with the pick three and the pick four, what we basically have, as we saw in the video, are three buckets or four buckets. Let's just start off with three here. And in those three buckets, you have ping pong balls numbered zero to nine. So that's 10 balls in each bucket. And so what you do is you pick three numbers between zero and nine. And so you might pick three, one, one, right? You can repeat numbers because there's a one in each of these buckets over here. So how do you use the binomial distribution to figure out the probability that you'll win or you'll match no balls, etc.? Well, whenever you're using the binomial distribution, you just have to figure out three things. And the three things that appear in this formula here are in and n is how many identical independent things are you doing and in a pick three you're doing three independent identical things right and it would also be this a similar kind of situation if we were flipping three coins rolling three dice etc we're doing three independent identical things the other, another thing that you have to figure out here is p and P is the probability, so I'm talking about this P right here, so, and this P right here also. P is the probability that if you just look at one of these identical independent things that you're doing, P is what is the probability of a success. So everything that happens in a binomial distribution, you have to either call it a success or a failure. And P is the probability of whatever it is that you're calling a success. Now in this case, what is going to count as a success is if they draw a three out of that bucket. And if they draw a one out of that bucket. If they draw a one out of that bucket. So what is the probability if we just focus on one of these buckets at a time that we get a success? Well, that three is one ball out of ten and so the, the P here is one-tenth, or 0.1, 1 out of 10. And the third thing that you have to identify in any kind of question involving the binomial distribution is what is X? And X is how many successes you would like to plug in the formula to calculate the probability for. 
Now, in this case, what we're asking is X can be how many balls do I match out of these three numbers I picked when they draw their three, how many could I possibly match? And so in this case, X could be either zero, I could match none of the balls, one, two, or three, okay? And so a problem on a test could ask, what's the probability that you match no balls? What's the probability you match, you match two balls or three balls? Or they could ask, what's the probability you match more than one ball? In which case you'd be talking about two or three, right? Let's calculate all of these four possibilities because that way we can make sure that all those probabilities, after they're calculated, they have to add up to one, 100%, because these are the only four things that can happen, match zero, one, two, or three balls. So let's plug these numbers into the formula, these various numbers for x. So let's calculate zero first. What's the probability that I match none of those balls? So x equals zero. We have n choose x. So this is on your calculator, the ncr key, n choose x. It tells us how many different ways can you choose x things from a group of n things. And so n is always three, three, choose zero. p to the x, well p is 0.1 to the x, 0. 1 minus p. Well, it's just 1 minus this point 0.1, which is going to be 0. 0.9, raised to the n minus x, 3 minus 0, so 3. So what are we going to get in this case? Well, 3 choose 0 is 1 times 0. 0.1 to the 0 is 1 times 0.9 to the third. So really the only action happening in this formula is right here, the 0.9 to the third power. So 0 0.9 to the third power, 0.9 cubed, is 0 0.729. 0 0.729. So that's our final answer. You have a 72.9% chance of matching none of the balls that they pick. All right, let's do this for one probability that they draw three balls and they match one of our three. So maybe the first one they pick is a three, but then they pick an eight and a five or something, right? So the probability we match one ball, three is in, choose x one times point one to the x times point nine to the n minus x, three minus one, which is two. Now that we've got two of these written here, before we go any further, let me just tell you something that I, I always teach my students to double check. And something you can double check, it doesn't guarantee that you're right, but it helps catch some errors, is that P plus 1 minus P, that is the, the point 0.1 and the point 0.9, when you add those two numbers together, you have to get 1. The point 0.1 is the probability of getting a match on any one draw of a ping pong ball. 0.9 is the probability you don't get a match on one draw of a ping pong ball. So these are complements, the, the 0.1 and the 0.9. And this part of the formula with the 0.1 to the 0 is taking care of all the matches. And so in this first problem, the probability of a match is 0.1. We're getting zero matches is what we're interested in. 0.9 is the probability of not matching one of the balls. We're looking for three of those, right? So the 0.1 and the 0.9 have to add to 100%. Another thing to check is that the zero matches and the three non-matches have to total to the three total identical independent things that we're doing here. Okay, so the three plus the zero has to equal three. Okay, now let's go back to the probability that we will match one of the three ping pong balls. Three choose one. So 3 NCR, 1 in your calculator, is 3 because there are three, whoops, three ways we can choose one thing from a group of 3. So 3 times 0.1 to the 1 is 0 0.1. 0 0.9 squared is 0.81. So here we have some more action going on. So 3 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.81, 0 0.243. 
0.243. So there's a 24.3 chance that you're going to match one of their three ping pong balls. And just to make sure we're clear here that these have to be matched in order when you're playing this kind of lottery. All right, let's do the probability that we could match two of the three. That's going to be, we're doing three identical things. We're going to match two of them. 0.1 to the 2, so we met, probability we match is 0.1, we're going to do that twice, times 0.9, we're not going to match one ball, equals, okay, 3 choose 2 is 3, 0.1 squared is 0.01, times 0.9 to the first, which is just 0.9, all right, so our overall 3 times 0.01 times 0.9, the probability we're going to match exactly two of the three is 0 0.027. 0.027. And now the only thing left is, well, what's the probability we match all three of these and we're actually going to win some money? Three choose three times 0 0.1 to the three because we want to match all three of those times 0 0.9 to the zero. We're not going to have any any balls that don't match equals 3 choose 3 is 1 times 0.1 to the third is 0 0.001 times 0.9 to the zero is just 1. So that is 0 0.001. Very low probability. That's a one chance in a thousand that you're going to match all three balls. Now, let's just double check that if you calculate the probability of all four things that could possibly happen, those probabilities have to add up to 100%, right? So here we have 7 plus 1 is 8, plus 3 is 11, plus 9, so we have 0. 2 plus 2 is 4, 8, 0. Carry the 1. 7, 8, 9, 10. So 1.000. So the sum of all those probabilities do add up to 1. Now, if we were to analyze a pick 4, I'm not going to do this, but I encourage you to do this so that you can get some confidence in, in using this kind of formula. Try a pick 4. And the only difference here between a pick 3 and a pick 4 is we're going to have one more bucket over here. It's identical. It has balls from 0 to 9. And so what's going to change here is that the possibilities for x are going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. n is going to be equal to 4. But p is still the same, 0.1, because that's the probability of matching one ball just looking at one of these draws on one of the buckets. right? And when you play a pick 4, you're going to have to pick four numbers, maybe three, one, one, and then maybe the, the fourth number you pick, maybe you pick six, right, for that one. So you try that. Calculate these one, two, three, four, five probabilities. Make sure they add up to exactly one, and that'll give you some confidence that you've done it correctly. So that's all for this one. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to look at that last kind of lottery ticket that they had in the video that we watched at the beginning of this video. We're going to look at that one where they had one giant bucket where they drew five balls. And in that case, the draws are dependent. And we're going to use a formula called the hypergeometric probability distribution in that one. Good luck, guys.